book can take you anywhere Turn the pages and you'll be there Come on, join us, you'll see We're reading with Kevin Lee Thank you for joining us for another episode of the Read with Carolee show. I am your host, Carolee, and today we are talking about hair. My kinky, coily hair. Well, not necessarily mine, but today we have Miss Aisha Rice, and she is the author of My Kinky, Coily Hair, and it takes us through the journey of a very special young girl and her hair journey of straight, kinky, coily, and I am very interested to see exactly how she develops and sees how much and how special her hair is. So it's time to tell the story. Thank you for coming, Miss Aisha Rice. Take it away. Thank you for coming to read with me and of course here on The Carly Show. So we are gonna read my kinky coily hair book and learn a little bit about Miss Naomi, which Although we may not share her name, I'm sure a lot of us share her story. So, every morning I wake up and try to figure out what to do with my kinky, coily hair. After fighting and pulling with no success, I go downstairs for breakfast. Are you trying out for the circus, Naomi? Darius laughed. Stop teasing your sister, my dad replied. Sweetheart, let me help you with your hair, my mom said. You have such beautiful hair, princess. No, I don't. I muddled under my breath. Right? You feel like that sometimes, that it's just not kind of working out the way that you want it. In school, all I could think about was hair. Why was mine so different? Why couldn't I have hair like Catherine, long, straight, and blonde? Or maybe even big brown curls like Jocelyn. I mean, anything had to be better than my kinky, coily hair. I would even prefer to have hair like the lady in my history book. That day at recess, I got dirt in my hair. I grumbled because I knew what that meant. Hair wash, right? Ugh, that's a process in itself. What happened to your hair, my mom said. Plain, I laughed. Well, child, you sure do play hard, she said as she looked through my hair. Tomorrow, we're washing and straightening your hair because Monday is picture day, she reminded me. Okay, I groaned. <sighs> right, we gotta get look good for picture day. The next morning, we woke up early to give mom extra time for my hair. She normally washed it, my hair in the sink, but it was getting so long, so we decided to wash it in the tub. Washing wasn't too bad. It actually felt good when she massaged my scalp. Naomi, sit back, she instructed. I need to get all the shampoo out. As I jumped up, yes, done. She reminded me that we needed to deep condition. Why, I whined. Your hair needs moisture. You don't want it to fall out, do you? No, ma'am, I said. Section, then detangle, and then twist. As she placed the shower cap on my head, I glanced at myself in the mirror. I laughed because I made me look like a chef or the lunch lady from my school. The special is goulash with a side of bug juice, I joked. <laughs> 15 minutes later, and we rinsed and headed to the living room for my least favorite part of the process. <sighs> the least favorite part, blow drying. Ugh. Come on, Naomi, it's only a little left to blow dry, Mom said. But Mom, it's been forever and my butt is numb, I said. Well, silly, you have a lot of hair. 
Next, I sat on the stool in the kitchen as my mom ran the flat iron through my hair. When she was younger, she said grandma used to use a hot comb on the stove. When she comes close to my edges, I always have to close my eyes because I swear I could feel the heat on me. Oh, Naomi. She laughed. It's not even close. On Monday, I was so excited to show off my new hairstyle. Take your raincoat, Naomi, my mom chimed. Mom, I'm fine. Naomi, bring your umbrella because we will not straighten your hair again if it rains, she said. Do we always listen when people tell us stuff, when our parents are telling us stuff? Mm -hmm. At school, my friends and I were excited to see how my pictures came out with my straight hair. <coughs> Recess was great. Even when Miss Rice warned us to come in, nobody wanted to go. The rain began to drop and I tried to cover my hair, but it was too late. When I got inside, I ran to the mirror, crimped and puffed. The moisture made it curl back up. After school, Darius tried to cheer me up as we walked to grandma's house. Sis, your hair looks good, no matter the style and in any type of weather, he smiled. I tried to smile back, but I couldn't. When we got to my grandmother's, What's wrong, child? My grandma asked me. I asked if she ever wished she could change something about herself. Naomi, what would you change? My kinky, coily hair, I answered. Why on earth would you change that? She asked. Well, it's too thick. I can't ever do it, I said. It takes too much work to maintain. Come on, child, let grandma show you something. We walked to Lim room and we pulled out a photo album. In the album were old pictures of my grandma, grandpa, and mom. And when we come back, I'll tell you a secret about this page. You see, baby, your kinks are a sign of your strength. Your thickness, that represents your bond with family. And baby, family will help you understand that you can endure anything. Those coils, they show how strongly we are connected with our community and our culture and our ancestors. Child, your hair is your inheritance, she continued proudly. You have the strength and the beauty of the many strong women who came before you. Love that. The next morning, I felt empowered. As I looked in the mirror, I smiled. I was proud of my hair. Whether it was twisted, straightened, wrapped, or in an afro, the possibility of styles excited me. But mostly I was excited because my kinky, coily hair was uniquely me. Okay, well, of course I have a connection to this book because my hair is kinky and curly, but also because I just released my book, Pretty Hair, <laughs> a couple months ago. So this, this book definitely takes on a similar theme and is very important, especially for young girls to be able to um, learn to love their hair. And we have a lot of kinky coily hair in, in this room today. So I am so glad that you were able to come and share this book with us. So um, I think I probably know this answer, but what, it, what was your reason um, behind writing this book? Well, I'm the middle girl of three girls. So I grew up in a household where, as we all know, with Young ladies, hair is a whole process. It's a whole yes. thing. <laughs> Regardless if you're kinky, coily, curly, straight, it doesn't matter. Our hair, it gives us a bout of confidence about ourselves. It excites us. When it's not done, we're mad, we're sad. When we have to get it done, it's a whole ordeal. We have to mm -hmm. sit. So it 
it ties into who we are. And it just made me realize that not a lot of people feel comfortable with being exactly who they are. Yes. Not all the time are we allowed to just be exactly who we are. And that's something I kind of wanted to share is that we're allowed to just be, be unapologetically ourselves, kinky, coily, curly. It really doesn't matter. We're just allowed to just be. That's fantastic. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> okay. So, um, this, is this your first book? It is my first book, my kinky, coily hair. Very, um, what are we, 14? Yeah, so going on into my third year. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that That's great. So um, are there any more books that may be coming up? There are more books. Um, we will not see Naomi for the second book. Oh. We actually are going to transition. Um, I know we a little off camera played about animals, and the second book will be uh -huh. focused around a dog named Charlie oh, okay. um, and Charlie's life. And also what he deals with day-to-day -day struggles um, wow. and how that relates to us as kids, as adults. And mm -hmm. same with my kinky coli is that a lot of this, we don't realize, is circular. The same problems we have as children dealing with our hair are the same problems we have as adults dealing with our hair in Absolutely. our corporate yeah. <laughs> areas, right? Yes. So um, just kind of want to help children navigate the world as well as adults. Because sometimes when we're rereading children's book, we realize... This is a really good message. This is something that I kind of need to be reminded about yes. um, as a as a grown up. <laughs> we do it too, guys. Hey, we're not perfect. Sometimes <laughs> yeah. we need reminders. <laughs> so you um, mentioned about uh, one of the pages in mm -hmm. your book um, yes. about the, and I saw yeah. that <laughs> those weren't just illustrations. Those were, were those real pictures of those your family? Those were real pictures of my family. My parents, mm -hmm. my husband, um, my sisters, uh, my sexual, and there's just a lot of people in those pictures that mean something to me just because, as we all know as authors, it's a process. Writing a book is a process, and you know we want to make sure that the people who helped us through that process um, are celebrated in some type of way. For me, I wanted to make sure that I can celebrate them and tell them, hey, <laughs> you know, not everybody still has their afros. <laughs> 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 well, that's, but, <laughs> that's beautiful. Uh, well, thank you for sharing that yeah. with us. So, um, and as we always ask yes. our authors, what was your favorite book growing up? I also had multiple favorite books, but I did bring one that is probably a less known book, which is The Talking Eggs by Robert Dan Susi. So it is more towards African folklore. It teaches us a lot about just not judging a book by its color, in this case, not judging an egg by its color, um, and just being kind to anybody who kind of crosses our path. And that is something that we really want to make sure, just even as children, as adults, that we are reminded of constantly that regardless how people show up, accept them as they are, how they show up in your space, exactly how they are until they give you a reason not to be happy for them. Be happy, celebrate exactly the person they are, um, and you just never know where that will lead. It might lead to some phenomenal things as we learn in this book. Yeah. Um, if you are nice, if you're not, uh, also, we learn in this book what that may entail. <laughs> <laughs> well, we here at the Read with Carolee show are happy to celebrate authors and we are happy to celebrate you today. Thank you so much for bringing us My Kinky Coily Hair and for your chance to win a signed copy of today's book, My Kinky Coily Hair, please email us at read at readwithcarolee.com. Thank you for joining us. And as always, if you're ever in the Prince William County area, come on down to Girani Coffee House, grab some coffee, stay for the books, and you can be a part of our audience. We tape every first Saturday of the month. Just go ahead to our website and check readwithcarolee.com for more information on tickets and our authors. So, Again, always grab a book and read. Thank you for joining us. We're reading with Carolee.
Thanks for watching another amazing episode of the Read with Carolee show. We have amazing authors coming by every week. So don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe below. You don't want to miss a thing.